Welcome to the program. My name is Scott Sharadi. Tonight we're talking about uh, African Australian communities in South Australia. My guest to discuss uh, this topic is Dennis Yengi, and you will find more about Dennis straight after this. Thank you very much. Um, as I said earlier, we're talking tonight about uh, the African Australian communities in the state of South Australia. And to discuss this uh, matter tonight with me is none other than uh, Dennis Yangi. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Glad is, um, it's great to be here on your show. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis. Uh, uh, let us know a little bit about uh, yourself uh, for people who may not know you uh, we know you are a community leader uh, and you uh, chair you are the current chair of the uh, uh, African Community Council of South Australia that much I can say but I'd like you to give us a bit more for those who may not know much about you thank you um, first I just want to say um, good evening to uh, your audience in Australia and um, yes about me as you said my name is just want to say my name is Dennis Yengi, and um, uh, audience um, from Australia. And um, yes, about sorry, me, Dennis, you said my that's, name. That's that's okay. You, you can hear me. Can you hear an echo? Yeah, that's right. Um, okay. Yeah. So just just a moment. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah. That's so okay. I. You can hear me. Can you? Hear it's still it's still happening. Yeah, that's right. I don't it's know. Still what, happening. The echo in the just background. just a second. Just a second. Technically, the let me check if. Uh, Okay, it should be all right now. Go ahead. Much better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, about myself, I was born in South Sudan, but at the age of seven, we 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 moved across the border to Uganda. So, in 1999, that was when we made the long journey to South Australia. So, ever since uh, South Australia has been my 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 state. But even prior to that, I've already had family living in South Australia since the 28th of May, 1970. So um, that's how long my family has been in South Australia. Um, but beside that, you know, as you hinted earlier, I am a community person. Um, during the day, I work as uh, an accountant. Um, and so, but a big part of my, part of me is really uh, being around the community and other things as well. Okay, that's good. We know that you are a number man. You crunch the numbers during the day, <laughs> and then then you go in the evening uh, to uh, you know connect with people, and that's uh, that's very good. Now uh, I've got a few. Let's just uh, have a few what I call icebreakers questions, just to make sure you're very comfortable and all that. I, I'll, I'll ask you to answer some of these questions because what sure. what. What's the uh, language, uh, what's the African language that you speak most uh, fluently? My mother tongue is actually called kuku, which kuku. Is, uh, in Swahili, it might mean chicken. It's chicken. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> but it's called kuku. You know, um, South Sudan is very diverse. We have yeah. so many um, languages and, uh, and tribes. So, yeah, I came from... The Kuku, which is uh, one of the body speaking groups. I see. Well, and how do you say hi in Kuku? Madan. <laughs> Madan. <laughs> That's pretty okay. easy. <laughs> uh, I, I guess by the time I finish doing this show, I'll be speaking a little bit of Kuku, I'm, I'm assuming. And uh, how do you say bye? Bye bye. Um, that is a little bit. I That's guess, a bit hard. That's a little bit hard to, to put it in context. <laughs> But you That's can okay. say, um, oh. That's all right. We know that you, you may not practice the uh, language much, but that's fine. All One right. thing you can also remember, I've been in Australia for 20 years, over 20 years. That's years. okay. So I'm doing pretty good. Perfectly. Uh, in, in fact, even myself, my mother tongue is Swahili uh, in, the, in, in the Congo, but 
I've lost a lot of it. Uh, I can still manage to speak, but you know, I've lost a lot of it because you know I left Congo almost 25 years ago, and and and, and I and I don't uh, speak the language much, so that's understandable. All right, mm. what's the what's the thing you like the most about um, Africa, for example? Really, the freedom, like uh, not having that routine lifestyle where you wake up in, like in Australia, you wake up in the morning, you're kind of programmed, really. And that's not, yeah. to me, the life that we should be living. I you see. So, so to me, that is what I'm really missing so much. And uh, the mangoes, where I came from, the mangoes, basically, they, they grow like, uh, like wild trees. Yes. And, so and they're very I sweet. Really, I miss the fruits and all that stuff in Africa. And uh, obviously you know, the community lifestyles where, you know, your neighbors and everyone in the community knows each other, you share things. Uh, in the West, everyone obviously are so busy and uh, that really leads to a, a different lifestyle. But uh, that's really the sort of thing that uh, I miss a lot, but we're trying to recreate that in South Australia through the African Community Council. All right, and what's the thing you like the most about Australia? About Australia, um, uh, the, the fact that, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. If you have mm. any aspiration, if you want to become a member of parliament, you want to become a businessman, you want to become a professor, it's all in your hands. You can do whatever you, wanna, you want to do. And so that, to me, is huge. Okay, good. That's all right. We've learned a few things there. Uh, let's go into now what you do with the community. So uh, I understand you were elected as the chair of the uh, AXA, uh, um, African Community Council of uh, South Australia, late last year. Uh, tell us about that and uh, what the organization does and any anything that you may want to mention to uh, inform us more about uh, the communities and, and the work that uh, AXA is doing in the community. Uh, basically, thank you for asking the very important questions because I think there are a lot of things that are happening in South Australia that I would like to share with uh, my African brothers and sisters in the other states. So the African Community Council of South Australia that I lead was basically established in 2004. Prior to that, we have two other organizations basically serving the same interests. So in 2004, the two came together and decided that why can we have one body that can serve the interests of the Africans in South Australia. They went for a camp, for a camping um, somewhere up in Adelaide Hills. And so the African Community Council was born. And since that time, you know, they have really been incredible leaders. I, if I can remember, we had about four doctors and uh, the founding uh, chairperson of the African Community Council was um, a guy from Uganda. His name, his name is Dr. William Kagwa. He really one of those champions of the African affairs in South Australia. And over the last 20 years, we have had a number of uh, leaders coming uh, until the pre my predecessor, uh, his name is Mabok Deng Mario. So some of these leaders have really done quite a lot for our community in South Australia. I can possibly say they have actually put the African communities here on the stage where South Australians get to know who we are. And so for me, it was uh, community life have really been a uh, part of my life for so long. You know, I've watched mm. these leaders lead the African Community Council. And so, and then it becomes a time where I felt I have to be in it in order to also contribute. Absolutely. Uh, and give us a little bit of a picture of the uh, African, the diverse African Australian community in South Australia. Um, what, what sort of ethnic background has the highest number? What, uh, what sort of... Uh, sort of the demographics there do you do you also have a lot of skilled migrant as as opposed to people from a forced migration background give us a bit more that we we, we can understand the, the yeah, picture you there put it right you did put it right there the african communities here are quite diverse you know the council represent over 35 communities from across the african continent 
And mm. guess what? I get to enjoy the privilege of going from one community to another almost every mm. weekend. And so some of these communities, he did ask about some, uh, some of the uh, largest numbers, um, mm. rather. Um, we have uh, those communities that uh, have come quite in the early 2000s. We mm -hmm. have obviously the South Sudanese that has got a bigger population in South Australia. We have the Ethiopians, we have the Liberians and the Congolese, as well as the, the, the uh, Sierra Leoneans as well. So we mm. are so diverse, but I guess those are the major bigger uh, communities we have in South Australia. And though we also have those that came um, under the skill migration program, um, we have the Kenyans who are also here. We have the Zimbabweans who are here. And obviously South Africa has got a bigger population here, but you know, uh, South Africa, uh, the South African story is uh, slightly different from us because mm. most of them obviously have uh, European backgrounds and they, they, they came here even prior to um, our times. So we are so diverse and there's quite a lot happening in each one of them. Talking about the South Africans, is, is there much interaction between uh, the white South Africans and the rest of the African communities in South Australia? I have to say, I really haven't had the pleasure of engaging with them in my role so far. But majority of the South Africans that I do interact that are part of our flagship events are mainly the South Af the, the, the black South Africans. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of the, the same uh, in most states where there's a maybe. I mean, in Melbourne, there has been a little bit of an engagement that has been facilitated, amongst other things, by um, an organization. Uh, I think African Chamber of Commerce, where there's many South Africans in business who have been uh, wanting yeah. to do that. But I, I suppose it's very uh, limited interaction, isn't it? That's exactly right. Though during my workplace, I have come across a number of white South Africans. Surprisingly, they came and introduced themselves to me and uh, they consider me as one of their brother, which mm. is really lovely to know. That's good. Um, now... I know in our communities we talk a lot about the challenges and we talk about the issues, but I want us to start with I mean, uh, uh, successes first and opportunities. Uh, in South Australia, tell us some of the successful things you've seen uh, in relation to um, our African communities. To be honest, you know, there are a lot of things within the African communities here in South Australia that really that inject a lot of energy and motivation to, to me in what I do for the African Community Council. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about success, you know, one, one person that came to my mind um, is this young lady from Kenya. Her name is Linda Moselli. She started a business, a fashion business here in South Australia, and now she's actually exporting products to the U.S., so it's really a big su success, I guess, from the individual level. And then mm -hmm. we talk about um, uh, sporting icons now. You know, uh, Awer Mabil is one of the Africans from South Australia that actually participated in the South Australian African Cup that we initiated here in the year 2000. So mm -hmm. Awer Mabil has actually gone, you know, to become a global football star playing for Australia. Um, and so we have this, uh, you know, flagship events, the African Cup, which is coming up, you know, that has attracted up to 10,000 spectators in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the year 2019. And it's actually considered one of the most exciting tournaments in the state. And I'm so, you know, uh, I'm so honored that this tournament, I was part of those individuals that actually initiated this back in the year 2000. And then we also have uh, the Africa Unmasked Festival, which is really huge, you know. Mm. And um, this festival is actually staged right in the heart of Adelaide at the Victoria Square that really showcases the vibrancy and, and, the, and, the, and the cultural diversity of our Africans. Uh, brothers and sisters in South Australia. So we have all this happening uh, in, in South Australia, and I could talk 
forever about some of these things. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I wouldn't mind you talking to me forever about the uh, the successes of uh, the communities out there because we hear so much about the, the, the negative or the things that are not working. So it's good to know that uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things that is happening. And, and I know in, in, I mean, sporting, uh, I mean, in, in sport, there's been really a lot of uh, um, successes there. I remember even this young, um, uh, this Kenyan uh, guy who was playing in the... Bruce. Uh, Bruce, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, uh, Bruce. He's, Bruce he's, Kamau he's also success. is what... Yeah, exactly. Kamau. He's one of those who participated. Even he, Thomas Deng. Thomas Deng is from Adelaide. He also yeah. participated in the African Cup. So, you know, when we talk about success on a pitch, African Cup is one of them. And of course, some of the guys who participated there, they, they didn't only benefit from you know, the football side of things. There are a lot of uh, spill of um, uh, benefits from the tournament. So mm. it's, it's coming up in, um, in, in November, and this time it's even going to get bigger because uh, COVID-19 uh, stopped us from uh, staging it last year. So the ex excitement has been building and growing. And so preparation are under ways to actually stage this tournament again in the coming month. So it's, it's something to look forward to. I hope borders will be open very soon. That would allow, you know, our brothers and sisters interested to come and, and well, enjoy as well. Absolutely. We hope and pray, you know, because uh, some of us here in Melbourne, man, we're dying. And you guys in, uh, in, in, in South Australia have, uh, have been quite lucky, uh, although there was a period where you had a little bit of infections. But uh, since then, things have been hunky-dory, so to speak. Uh, no lockdown. You're enjoying your time out there. To be, to be honest, there is no better place in the world to be at the moment other than Adelaide, South Australia. Not because not really. of the freedom that not because of the freedom that we have, but Adelaide has also uh, been voted the third for three years in a row the most livable city in the world. Would you believe that? And we not get really. to enjoy that. Okay, you, you you guys have taken the place that we left here in Melbourne. You know, <laughs> we sort of we, we want it to be you know a fair play. We want to give a little bit. It's not just uh, Melbourne all the time, but with what is happening with. Uh, uh, the current uh, uh, Daniel Andrews government. Uh, I, I don't know whether we're ever going to regain that place um, in uh, South Australia. Anyway, that's, I mean, uh, in the world. So maybe uh, uh, Adelaide uh, should feel that for the next uh, few years because I don't think uh, Melbourne will be regaining that place anytime soon with everything. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of success in the sport. There's also a lot of success uh, in, in, in many things, uh, including the cultural uh, space. Uh, and uh, and the business. Why do you think um, uh, this is sort of happening in South Australia? Is there is it because uh, perhaps the uh, state government there is doing a lot of things to help the communities, or there's another mindset uh, within the African communities in there, or, or is it in the water? That is really a very important question to ask. Mm. You know, the reason why South Australia is really unique when you compare to other states in South Australia. Is it purely because of what the founders of our state did in 1836? I have been lucky enough to actually study Australian history during my high school time. So mm. in 1836, the founders of our state say, whatever happens in other states in Australia should never be, should never be repeated in Adelaide or in South Australia. So since that time, you know, if there's anything that affects a particular community, ethnic community, they, both sides of, of the parliament always take a bipartisan approach. And uh, in 1986, 1980, uh, the South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission was established. And you know, for me, it's actually an honor that uh, the premier have appointed me to be part of that commission. That really that advised the government on some of the multicultural affairs in South Australia. So the lifestyle that, that we enjoy, the harmony that we enjoy in South Australia is really embedded in the, in, the, in, the, in the system of government that we have here. So when we see this success that happens, it's really because of what our governments have done over a long period of time. And uh, it really it makes life a lot easier and, 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 and happier for everyone. 
And I suppose uh, th there is a significant amount of support that uh, the government gives to uh, multicultural communities in general and African communities uh, specifically. I think there, there was a stage where, uh, you know, the uh, I'm not sure if it was AXA or any other uh, or, or another African organization that was receiving quite significant funding uh, from the government. I don't know if that's still the case. Well, you know, what I, what I can tell you is that uh, since I have come into office, the government has been very keen to engage with me. You know, there has never been a time where the, uh, the, minister, the, the, the premier have actually invited, um, there has been a time, but there has never been a time where we had a very close collaboration with the government. I was invited to the uh, to the parliament um, on the 25th of mm. May last year, and uh, that was during the African Day. So I was invited to the parliament, and they received by the premier there and addressed, you know, members and leaders of the community. So uh, since ever that time, the premier and his ministers have really been engaging with us. You know, they want to listen to what we what we intend to do for our community. And if there are challenges, how can we work together to address some of those challenges? All right. Uh, let's talk about the challenges. Uh, that's a good way to introduce that. We talked about the successes. What are the challenges in South Australia for African communities? I can simply say that some of the challenges that we have in South Australia, they are not really unique from other states. The only mm -hmm. difference is that when we have a challenge in South Australia, it's, it is not identified as an African challenge alone. It becomes a challenge of the state. And then that puts the government in a position to come out and say, we have this in our community. How can we address this together? So mm. the African Community Council still takes a leadership there, as uh, you would know that in Africa, it takes a whole village to raise a child. But, mm -hmm. you know, in Australia, that village has disappeared. So we in, at the African Community Council are really trying to recreate that village so that if we have any challenge within the community, whether it is in Liberian or, um, or Congolese or South Sudanese community, how can we tackle it all together? So we have challenges to do with the young people. But you know what? We have over 10 po African police officers Within, uh, within the South Australia Police Force. And yeah. uh, in fact, my deputy is a senior constable within the South Australian Police. So if there are challenges within our young people, we often work together. It is not pointed as an African issue, but rather an issue within the South Australian community that need to be addressed. And I suppose uh, talking about the police, you probably have uh, one of the highest uh, numbers of uh, African uh, born police men in the states uh, i mean in, in in all of australia in, in um victoria there's an an effort that has been ongoing for a number of years uh f from the police to try to recruit more africans that is uh, starting slowly to yield some fruit but the number is still quite low but i think in you know uh south australia you've managed at least to to get uh, uh 10 uh which is quite over quite high, isn't it over yeah, 10. It's, it's over 10 and uh it's really, you know, it goes a long way in showing how, you know, they got, the government wants us to be involved in the system so they can understand us better. There is a family of three boys, and the three boys all chosen to be police officers. So we have a family of three uh, that are all doing either in the, in the police force. And so it's, a, it's really a testament of... This, the, the governments, that successive governments that we have in South Australia. Okay. Um, is there any other challenge that you see apart? You, you you mentioned obviously some issues with the youth and that sort of across the board in um, you know the, the the country. Other states had the same problem. Uh, the the degrees obviously is uh, uh, different. But any other challenge that uh, you've had to face as a community in South Australia over recent years? Well, Thank you. Uh, one of the challenge, one of the challenges that really uh, prompted myself to put up my hand for the African community leadership is, is that 
how can we inspire and set up our young people for future success? To mm. me, that is a, a challenge. And at the same time, it is all, also an opportunity. Mm. So uh, what we are trying to do to address that is to have a Young African Leadership Congress. And that Congress will bring the best of Africans, whether in South Australia or in other states, to come for one day where we have people of African descent who are in, in good places, in places that can actually inspire our younger people to do the same. So uh, the theme for that is basically, you can't be what you can't see. So that mm. is something that we wanted to happen uh, this year, but um, preparation are underway. And given that we have a lot of things cramped up towards the end of the year, we're more likely to have that um, in the beginning of the new year. So that's one challenge that we wanted to address. And uh, I think that is very important because our future really depends on the, the success of these young, younger people. All right. Um, and what's, what's sort of, how does the community uh, engage with the, uh, the government? Apart from obviously the structure that you have, AXA, but the rest of the communities, um, how, inter how active are they in, in trying to um, engage with the government to address uh, any particular issues that, is, um, that, that they may be facing? Obviously, the African Community Council is the peak body for uh, the African communities here. But mm. that, doesn't stop, that doesn't stop any community from engaging directly with the government either with their um, uh, local member of parliament or with um, any other uh, service providers. So they do still engage at the individual or sub-community levels. So it is still open, but we do encourage, we do encourage that, you know, when we have a challenge, uh, the AXA, AXA has the capacity to, to assist the government in addressing any challenges that we might have within our communities. Mm. And, and you are a fairly young uh, fellow. Um, you could be more concerned or more preoccupied with uh, advancing your your career uh, as much as possible uh, without necessarily getting involved in the community, which is uh, as much as it is obviously an honor to serve the community, but there are quite a lot of challenges. First, how did you manage to, to get elected uh, uh, in, in amongst the... Uh, we know that many of our communities are, are led by... Uh, um, you know, senior people, but you're quite young. You managed to get that that role. Uh, to tell us what what led to that. To, you know, it, 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 to be honest, it is not. Uh, I ha okay, to be honest, it is not something that just happened overnight. Mm. You know, I have um, an idol, someone that a huge part of my life, Ben Yangi, who has been instrumental in community affairs in in, in um, not only in South Australia but uh, in Australia as well, since the 1970. So when I came at a very young age, whatever function he goes to, he makes sure I go along and see what he does. So I mm. think he has played a huge um, part in, uh, in actually encouraging me to be part of the community. And since uni time, I remember when I was still at uni, I was already a founding principal of our community school got myself involved, you know, in a lot of things within the community. So coming to last year, it was already part of me. So it was just, uh, I guess, a time I felt that, you know, I need to step in because I stand as a bridge between the younger generation that are growing up in Australia and the older generation that came from Africa. I understand both sides. And so that really, I felt I have to come in. And uh, it's really been, um, I guess, a privilege for me to lead this community. It is one of those, um, one of the biggest honor, I have to say, I have. Because when I go last, the previous week, I was um, with the Sierra Union community. This coming weekend, I will be going to the Nigerian Cultural Day and then Ethiopian Independence Day on the same day. And the week after... I and then um, will be heading to the Uganda Independence Day. So each time I go to this community, they really embrace me. So it really makes me feel that, you know what, 
the, the, the borders that we have in our African continent really shouldn't, we shouldn't think about them. We, at the end of the day, we are really all Africans and that's all that should matter. Absolutely. So I, I suppose that there's a more cohesive sort of uh, approach uh, throughout the communities uh, in, Safar in, in South Australia for, for people to work together, isn't it? Very much, very much. And I think uh, a lot of the flagship events that we have, like the, um, the, the African Cup, the Unmask Festival that we have, and some of the programs that we also run here, that encourage that cohesiveness, cohesiveness for people to actually um, stick together. And geographically as well, given the size of um, Adelaide, South Australia, you can pretty much drive from one end to another within, within an hour. So that yeah. makes it really easy for people to be together. Absolutely, that is right. I remember when I when I went to to Adelaide the first time, uh, it was uh, it was uh, I was surprised because I was thinking it was a, a very big place, but um, it ended up uh, <laughs> being very beautiful. Uh, a small place. You can you know the, the the whole downtown. You can you can drive through it within 10, 15 minutes downtown area. Anyway, that that's good. So um, as we get to towards the end of the the show, what? Uh, well, actually, maybe just one question uh, as in relation to what you said about uh, understanding both worlds, both the young people and the older gen generation. What, what we seem to be um, noticing in many communities uh, across uh, Australia, whether it's in Melbourne here or in Sydney or even Queensland and other places when I speak to other people, there is that, that sort of divide between the old generation and the newer one. Uh, which uh, apparently it is actually uh, widening. Uh, and, and that is a, a concern because the two groups have to work together. Do you have the same problem there? And, and, and if so, what, what, what do you think is the best way to resolve it? Or perhaps you, you've had it, you've already resolved it, uh, or, or you may know how to best deal with that. It, to be honest, you know, that issue is there and it varies from community to community. I go to some of this community and then I see these, you know, incredible young, young people getting involved in the cultural aspects of things, in, um, in, 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 in doing things during events in the community. And then I go to some other communities where young people are not involved at all. They are disengaged. So to me, that's one thing that we are trying to address. And so at the African Community Council, what we are trying to do is empower some of these younger people. For instance, the Young African Leadership Congress that uh, I spoke about earlier. We are actually mm -hmm. inviting some of these young leaders from across the communities to come and design the program. So in a way, we're trying to really understand and empower them on the things that we can do together to actually bring us closer and, and to, to close that gap. So it is definitely an issue, but I think with more involvement of the younger people, empowering them and trying to understand some of the challenges that they actually go through, we might be able to, uh, to, to, to improve the relationship between the two um, age groups. All right, so perhaps uh, we may even learn a few things uh, from you guys, uh, given that you've been so successful in so many areas. Uh, Maybe that's uh, another area where you can uh, lead the pack and uh, show us how to get it done because uh, it's uh, it's obviously a challenge here in Victoria as well, specifically where I am, and I know it uh, happens in many other places. Um, maybe one more question before we finish. Um, entrepreneurship uh, in South Australia. You mentioned earlier that there's a, uh, there was a success of a young lady who was in fashion who was exporting. Tell us a little bit about people who are uh, succeeding in business uh, wealth creation in South Australia and whether you see uh, a hope or there's still a, a lot of work to, to be done in that area? To, to, thank you uh, for asking that uh, question. You know, to be honest, there are two things that really inspired me to, to take up this leadership. One is how do, we, how do we inspire our younger people so they can so we can set them up for future, uh, future success. Uh, mm. Secondly, how can we actually, you know, Africans, mm. they've got the entrepreneurial um, spirit with them. In Africa, if you don't know how to sell, make money by going to the market and selling things, 
uh, you know, you might struggle. In South yeah. Australia, we, we are seeing businesses that are coming up as well. You know, I spoke about the younger lady that is doing very well. We have uh, businesses like restaurants here. We have um, established um, uh, uh, tradies who are doing well in the community. And um, uh, the other program that I actually didn't mention is that uh, I'm working with uh, some of these local government to actually create um, an African entrepreneurship event. An event that will come that will bring all the Africans in the state to address three areas. One, how can we support the existing businesses that we have so they can grow and compete with any other business in South Australia? And secondly, how can we prompt, how can we prompt people that actually have got a business talent, but they don't realize that they have that business in them? Mm -hmm. Thirdly, how can we support people that have business ideas, but they don't know where to go for capital, they don't know the process of establishing their business. So we have, we are actually, we have been working for, for, for almost four months now to design this inter, uh, business entrepreneurship events uh, for the African people here with the help of the business center of one of the uh, local government areas. So it's really exciting. And uh, you know, these are the things that uh, motivate me and gives me extra energy to, uh, to come and do some of these things for the African Community Council, even after a long day in the office. Okay. Uh, Dennis Yangi, we wanna thank you for your time to uh, African Knowledge. And uh, we hope that uh, we will have more opportunities to uh, speak to you and other members of the uh, African Australian community in South Australia, so that uh, we get to know more about the, the community here at African Media Australia. We want to be as, as inclusive as possible and be able to highlight what is happening within our African communities across Australia. So we do appreciate you taking your time to come and talk to us about what is happening there. And uh, um, we, we hope that we'll have more opportunities in the future. Thank you very much. and. Um, um, we wish you all the best in your leadership uh, journey, uh, and um, perhaps um, you know when you, by the time you finish, you will have uh, you're already preparing a successor will be quite, quite as successful as, as as yourself, isn't it? Well, uh, well, I th well, I have to say thank you so much for having me as well. You know, it's it's really being an honor to share what uh, we're doing in South Australia, and uh, you know, to me, it really doesn't matter wherever you are whether you're in Victoria or New South Wales, if you have an idea, if you have a talent, if you have an energy for us to make difference in the lives of our African people in South Australia, I would like you to reach to me. We, you know, we shouldn't be restricted by our state borders for us to make our communities better. So it's really been an honor for me to speak to you. We do have a lot of things that I would love to share with anyone so um, uh, at the moment, our social media and engagement platforms are being uh, uh, rebooted, re we, 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 we refreshing it. So they are down at the moment, but in the next couple of weeks, they will be up running again. But again, really honored to speak to you. And uh, you're doing amazing work, uh, you know, filling in the gaps within the African communities that uh, the mainstream media uh, are not doing so well. So congratulations to you, to your, to you, to, to your team. and. Uh, a great work. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. That was uh, Dennis Yangi, uh, Chair of the uh, African Community Council of South Australia, AXA in short. Well, that is it uh, for now, folks. As usual, we encourage you to share the video, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that notification bell so you get automatically notified next time we are on air thank you very much uh, and uh, we'll see you next time all good thank you bye bye bye